It is about time. The 10-year anniversary of the 2013 the Louisville men's basketball team winning the national championship and the Cardinals are finally going to be recognized next month. We'll talk about that and the Louisville women's basketball team getting a statement victory over the weekend. So with that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On the Wolf Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As always, I want to say thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that the show is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. As I mentioned, for the first time, the 2013 Louisville Men's Basketball National Championship team is being recognized um, in mid-February. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the Louisville Women's Basketball team's 82-75 to victory over Florida State over the weekend. And then finally, to conclude the show, We'll talk about or we'll dive into a weekly mailbag segment. So beginning with the big news from last week, it was announced that upon its 10-year anniversary, the 2013 Louisville Men's Basketball National Championship team was finally going to be recognized. I believe the weekend of February 18th and 19th is when this is going to go down. Um, but regardless, for Louisville fans, it was one of those instances that in which it happened, fans were basically saying it is about damn time. Granted, you can't really fault the university for not recognizing them sooner, considering the um, the NCAA trouble that the program has been in um, for nearly the past decade. Um, but I figured for this segment of the show doing something that I necessarily have never done on the show, which is basically kind of reminisce, going back in time. But with how Louisville basketball has been, not only just this year, but the past couple of years, the past half decade or so, it's been tough for Cardinals fans. It's been tough um, with Rick Pitino getting fired. It's been tough with the scandals. It's been tough with you know how the Chris Mack tenure ended. The beginning of the Kenny Payne era has been tough for Cardinal fans. This season has been extremely tough. Um, and not to mention the um, the NCAA cloud that was over this program for over a half of a decade. So I think that, you know, you look at this and there's no secret that Louisville fans have really been through the mill, so to speak. And I think that it would probably be nice for Cardinal fans to kind of put that to the side for a second. And let's just talk about that 2013 National Championship season. Let's just talk about that season as a whole, um, things that happened that year, because they happened. No matter what the NCAA will say, um, and a lot of people have um, their problems with how the NCAA conducted their investigation. They have problems with how the previous athletic department um imposed a self-imposing ban or a, a self-ban in the postseason. And not to mention, you know, even the findings of the court and the basis of, you know, the penalties in general. A lot of Louisville fans were really just not fans of what happened to their basketball program. And I'm, I'm not here to talk about that. We could talk about that for an hour. We could, you know, talk about that for all of the episodes in this month. But I want to talk about the 2012-2013 season. Let's go back in time. Let's go back to a decade. First of all, I can't believe that it has legitimately been 10 years since that season. I was a freshman in high school at the time. We had just come off of that Final Four run in which we lost to the eventual national champion, Kentucky Wildcats, with Anthony Davis. And going into that season, I'll be honest. I mean, sure, hindsight is twenty twenty. But even before that season, I was telling a Kentucky friend of mine, a fan of Kentucky, that I think this is Louisville's year. I thought it was going to be Louisville's year. You know, Peyton Siva back. Russ Smith was becoming a star. You had Gorgie Zhang back. Uh, Shane Bahannon, Wayne Blackshear, so on and so forth. You also had a transfer from George Mason by the name of Luke Hancock, which a lot of people... Um, 
you know, this was really kind of the era before social media, but word of mouth was that Luke Hancock was going to be like this team's Kyle Couric. And um, he ended up, you know, playing that role. Um, but the the season as a whole, you look at what happened early on. I, you know, it kind of got a little tough when Gorgie had that injury early on. Um, still almost won um, that holiday turn. I believe it was the Maui. Was it the Maui that, or it was Battle for Atlantis? I think no, I think it was the Battle for Atlantis, um, in which the Cardinals beat Northern Iowa, then they beat uh, Missouri, but lost to Duke. Um, on November 24th for the first loss of the season. And then the Cardinals went on a little bit of a win streak. They beat John Calipari at Kentucky for the very first time. Um, you know, got some solid victories along the way. Louisville started out very, very solid. They were 12-1 and going into the 2013 calendar year. Had three victories to begin 2013. Um, but then a tough stretch hit. The Cardinals lost three straight. They lost to Syracuse at home. Um, I I thought that they had a chance to get into that game, but um, Brandon Trish, C.J. Fair, um, Deion Waiters, very, very solid Syracuse team. We knew that all season long. Um, And then the Cardinals lost to Villanova in a game that they should not have lost at all. Went up to Philadelphia, didn't necessarily look like themselves, and they came away with a nine-point loss. And then they played Georgetown the following Saturday, lost by two points. Georgetown, for those that uh, whose memories um, fall short, Georgetown was sort of like the thorn in Louisville's side in the Big East days. Um, Otto Porter Jr. was a guy that balled out against the Cardinals all the time. Um, and Louisville came up short against Georgetown. And sitting at 16-4, and four, a lot of people were like, man, What's going on? Well, Louisville picked it back up, got a three-game winning streak, and then the game in South Bend happened. The five-overtime game, 104-101 to loss to Notre Dame. Um, Had a lot of people wondering, okay, does this Louisville team have the it factor? Could they go win the national championship? That's yet to be seen. Well, what happened after that? The Cardinals did not lose a single game from February 9th on. Um, got victories leading up to the game in the regular season finale against, um, I believe it was against, well, actually it wasn't the regular season finale, but they got a win at Syracuse, which was big time. Syracuse was ranked big three from Luke Hancock in that game. Beat Notre Dame by double digits in the regular season finale. And then they went on to go ahead and win the Big East Championship, the big come-from-behind victory over Syracuse in that second half. Such an amazing game. Um, And then the NCAA tournament occurs. They play in Rupp Arena for the first two matchups, two blowout victories. They win against Oregon in the Sweet 16. The Kevin Ware injury in the first half against Duke um, was one of those moments that, you know, kind of took your breath away. Um, really made you realize just how fragile um, life can be. Um, Such a horrific injury, you know, snapping his leg uh, made me sick to my stomach. Uh, Just a a horrible, horrible injury. The Cardinals would rally um, in support of Kevin Ware and beat Duke, avenge an earlier season loss by 22 points. Going into the final four, they play a Wichita team. They go by, they go down by 12 in this one, and you think, oh, here we go. Louisville's going to lose to a team, you know, in Wichita State that's a Cinderella team. The best team in college basketball is going to lose to a Cinderella team. Well, Tim Henderson etches his name into the Louisville history books with two clutch threes back to back to cut the deficit in half, and the Cardinals would inch out the Oh, Wichita State Shockers. Spike Albrecht does his best in the national championship game against Michigan, uh, or for Michigan against the Cardinals. Puts up one of the uh, kind of most electric performances that I've seen from a role player against the Cardinals. And then Luke Hancock immediately answers um, the alley-oop from Siva to Trez at the end of the first half, uh, completes the run, and then the Cardinals hold on to victory, winning their third national championship in program history. It happened. Will there be people in the comments section like, well, the NCAA didn't say it happened. 
if that gives you peace, if that is your, um, if that's your decision and you want to be that way, oh, well, but we saw it happen. Um, and it's nice that the 2013 team is finally getting recognized. Josh Hart company said that the university will still follow NCAA regulations. So I'm interested to see what happens here. Um, but Hey, I would love to see that banner back up. Doubt it will happen, but you can always hope. So um, let's take a little bit of a step um, towards women's basketball. The team got a victory against Florida State over the weekend that served as a statement victory um, in mid-January. We'll talk about that here in just a second after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. Um, they go beyond resume data by using insights from your job posts, company, and their 875 million member profiles. To, po or to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. It makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockedoncollege. That's linkedin.com slash lockedoncollege to, to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Oh, I, there we go. Hey, Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen every day. Make sure to check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball all in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Heading right on into the second segment of the show, discussing the statement victory from the Louisville women's basketball team, 82-75 to down in Tallahassee against the Florida State Seminoles. Seminoles coming into this game 16-3, 5-1 one in conference play. Cardinals 13-6, 5-2 in ACC play. And for the Cardinals, it was about getting that statement victory. Um, obviously, the team... Um, has kind of struggled out of the gates, um, got two victories uh, against Georgia Tech and Pittsburgh um, after losing to Duke. They had a tough loss at Virginia Tech on Thursday evening, 81-79, to and looking to get back in the win column, looking to get some momentum. The Cardinals used a solid fourth-quarter comeback to defeat the Florida State Seminoles, 82-75 to on Sunday afternoon. And the big storyline for the Cardinals in this one was that Florida State transfer Morgan Jones had her best game to date as a Cardinal. 25 points, 9 for 10 from the field, 7 of 8 from the free throw line to go along with 10 rebounds and 3 blocks. Um, this was the performance that a lot of Louisville fans looked at and said, that's what we need from Morgan Jones on a nightly basis. Now, granted... Averaging 25 and 10 may be a little bit unrealistic, right? I'm not saying that she has to achieve the statistical numbers every single game, but I would like to see what she did on the court be replicated over the remainder of the season. What I mean by that is being another scoring option outside of Haley Van Lith. One of the main issues that the Cardinals have had this season is consistent scoring outside of the Cardinals star. Haley Van Lith has had to bear the burden of being sort of the primary scoring option that really is the only consistent threat. Um, you've had Morgan Jones, Chrislyn Carr, Olivia Cochran, Liz Dixon, um, even Josie Williams be uh, scoring options here on or here and there, but not necessarily a ton of consistency outside of Haley Van Lith. And seeing Chrislyn Carr and Morgan Jones both in double figures is what you need if you are the Cardinals moving forward. I think that that is the best recipe for success is taking a lot of the scoring responsibilities off of Haley Van Lith. Now, granted, Haley's still going to have to ball out. She's going to have to score in double figures almost every single game for the Cardinals to really 
um, rise to the occasion and make sure that they get in the win column. But they need other players to step up. Morgan Jones and company did that on Sunday afternoon. You had three other players in double figures. Olivia Cochran was 5-9 and nine from the field. She had 13 points, 8 rebounds. Um, obviously, Morgan Jones, 25-10. and 10. Chris Lynn Carr, 11 points. Um, and that was huge as well for the Cardinals starting five. Haley Van Lith, um, 20 points, five steals, eight rebounds, eight assists. She was um, absolutely phenomenal on all ends of the court. Granted, she had seven turnovers, which um, something that she probably would like to have back. But regardless, the Cardinals outscored the Seminoles 31 to 18 in the final quarter. Um, Louisville seemingly trailing for the majority of this game. Um, I'm looking to see if they... Um, looking to see when the first lead for Louisville actually occurred. Um, I don't necessarily think it happened for quite some time. I mean, the team trailed for all of the first quarter. Um, or I'm sorry, the first half. In fact, they didn't get a single lead going into the um, going into the halftime break. Louisville cut it to forty. Or I'm sorry, forty to thirty nine. About halfway through, and Florida State continued to build. Louisville had the first lead um, with four twenty eight in the third quarter off of free throws from Morgan Jones, and then Florida State went on a little bit of a run. Uh, the Cardinals opened up the fourth quarter down 57 to 51, and it was all Louisville in the fourth quarter. Outscored the Seminoles by 13. Just a solid victory for the team. A team that is looking for a victory to build on. Obviously, the team still is solid. I mean, they're sitting at 13 and six, or I'm sorry, 14 and six. But hey. This is a Cardinals team that I'm not saying that they're not going to make the tournament at all. I mean, I think that they definitely are. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 games left on the schedule. But this is a solid opportunity to put them within striking distance in the ACC. Right now, they are essentially a game out of first place. Duke is 5-0. and Notre Dame is sitting at second at 5-1. and Louisville's tied for third with Florida State 5-2. and Um the team has the opportunities to uh, put their foot forward um, here in the next couple weeks. They have Boston College coming up next week, um, all, or I'm sorry, this upcoming week, um, NC State next weekend, next Sunday, which is a big game. Um, they still have North Carolina to play uh, in this season and two matchups with the top 10 team in Notre Dame, a home and home with the Fighting Irish. So I think for Louisville, it's just a matter of continually getting better game in, game out, right? Um, is it going to be like a season in years past where they get back to the Final Four? I mean, I'm not going to say probably not because you just never know with the players that Louisville has, the talent that they have, the coaching that they have. But um, hopefully they can just continue to get better to where they're playing their best ball at the end of the season. Um, the Cardinals shot 54% from the field in this matchup against the Seminoles. Uh, very efficient from the field, 36% from three, 73.7% from the free throw line. They out-rebounded Florida State by 12, I'm sorry, 14, 42 to 28. Um, they did have 18 turnovers to 19 assists. That's something that they have to get better at is um, the assist-to-turnover ratio. They have to cut down some of the turnovers, but regardless – um, you know, winning the rebounding battle, shooting over 50% from the field, and, you know, shooting pretty decently from the three-point arc. A solid recipe for success for the global women's basketball team. Getting back on track, getting back into the win column after a tough loss against Virginia Tech in a matchup that you very well could have won. So I think for the Cardinals now moving forward, it's just looking forward to the next game. You've got Boston College getting back into the win column, getting into a position where you're forcing other ACC teams to win. You know, you're forcing Duke, Notre Dame, and Florida State to win because, hey, if you keep winning, who knows what could happen. So, solid statement victory for the Louisville women's basketball team, and we'll continue to talk about the team as the season goes, up, goes along. Sorry. 
excuse me, but for the remainder of the show, we'll dive into the weekly mailbag. We'll do that here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season, basketball, and World Cup. Obviously, those are in the past, but just showing you um, what all it covered. Uh, but get all your other future sports at BetOnline.net. If you if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Heading right on into the final segments of the show. Diving into the weekly mailbag, a couple of great questions, beginning with one that a lot of people are asking. Do you think Kenny Payne gets a second year as the Louisville men's basketball team's head coach? Obviously, I have no inside information, but I do. I think he gets a second year. Will people be happy to hear that? A lot won't. Some will. Um, but I think he gets a second year. I think that Josh Hurd's going to give him a second year, um, regardless of how you feel about how the roster was constructed. Um, there still was the NCAA cloud, and whether or not you believe that that should have played that big of a factor in you know the roster construction for this year, that's neither here nor there. Um, the reality is that I think that Josh Hurd and company are going to give Kenny Payne an offseason with no NCAA cloud to um, use the portal to – um, essentially revamp this team. There's no secret that this team has to, um, you know, absolutely overhaul the roster, but I do think that he gets a second year. The second question is, what does Louisville need to do in the offseason to ensure that 2023-24 is successful? Um, I mean, I think that there's a couple things. I think that the coaching has to be better. Um, if Kenny Payne is the Louisville head coach for next year, which I said that I think he gets a second year, assuming that he does. Um, I think that the coaching has to get better in terms of X's and O's. I think that, um, uh, I think that um, you're going to have to overhaul this roster. I think you're going to have to bring in six to seven guys that can uh, compete at the division one power five level um, guys that can be scoring options um, guys that can be double digit scores um, players that, um, are going to give you maximum effort, so on and so forth. So I think that what needs to happen is that Kenny Payne and company are going to have to absolutely transform this roster. The roster turnover might be great after this season. Um, great in meaning that there's a lot of um, numerical transfers or guys going to the NBA. Um, you know, maybe L. Ellis leaves as well, so who knows, but... I think at this point in time, the only way you're going to get successful is if you absolutely overturn this roster. Uh, the third question is, have you seen any types of improvement over ACC play so far in 2023? Here and there, maybe. Um, I don't really feel good about answering that uh, because I don't think that the effort is consistent enough. I don't think that this is, this team is consistent enough to really make any of those quote unquote improvements substantial um, has there been instances where the efforts gotten a little bit better where the team looks a little bit more, um, you know, comfortable with, you know, what's happening on the court here and there. Sure. But we're still getting beat by double digits. Um, you're still having issues with, um, you know, you know, common plays, um, you know, common game situations, effort, coaching, so on and so forth. It's just been a perfect storm, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say that there has been any improvement that I can put my finger on and look at. Maybe outside of rebounding here and there, um, but the effort aspect of things still kind of takes away some of those um, improvements that we may or may not have, be, have been seeing. Trent Flower, Trenton Flowers, the five-star uh, top 10 player in the 2024 class, has cut his list with Louisville included. Do you think the Cardinals have a solid chance to land him? I mean, I think that the Cardinals are in the mix here, but um, with North Carolina also in the mix, um, let's, let's be honest. Um, since the NCAA cloud has been lifted, 
Louisville hasn't gotten one single um, highly rated prospect to commit. So at this point, I don't. I'll be honest, I don't really feel comfortable at this point. And with you know teams probably using negative recruiting against the Cardinals with how bad they they've been playing, I think that um, I think that the Louisville Cardinals are in the mix for Trenton Flowers, but. I don't necessarily know how good of a chance that they have. Um, so we'll just have to continue to see. But overall, um, I will have an episode that talks about the Trenton Flowers um, recruitment um, more in depth on the uh, Tuesday episode of the show. So, uh, but that is going to uh, wrap up today's uh, show. Um, before we get out of here, though, I, I do want to. Um, I do want to talk about some more tragic um, news that came out over the weekend. Uh, two members of the Georgia football program, uh, Devin Willock and Chandler LaCroix, um, they were killed in a um, automobile incident. Um, and um, I, I just, uh, my heart goes out to the Georgia football program. Um those that were close to those two members, uh, both Devin and Chandler, the friends and family um, of those as well. Um, absolutely heartbreaking. Heart goes out to the Georgia student body, all those that knew and that loved Devin and Chandler. Um, our hearts here, uh, Locked On the Louisville Podcast and um, the Locked On Podcast Network and the Louisville fan base go out to you all. But that's going to wrap up this episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here really soon.